Hi, I'm Leslie Meredith with Breakbulk Events and Media, and I am here with two of our panelists from the session on um, shipping issues facing Africa. Um, and one thing that came up in today's session was the topic of cabotage. Seemed a, um, we had some different views on that. Uh, and I'd like you to share your perspective, um, maybe starting with you. you. You have sort of a very interesting model um, at work in Nigeria. Maybe you could explain that um, because it may be unfamiliar, unfamiliar to many of us in the industry. Okay. Uh, well, Nigeria has an interesting cabotage regime, which, is called, which, which we call a liberal cabotage regime. Uh, that means it's, it's not, it, uh, Nigeria is not uh, pursuing a policy of absolute prohibition of foreign vessels uh, from trading in coastal, in, in its coast. Uh, what Nigeria is doing is um, allowing foreign vessels to trade in Nigeria's coastal waters, provided they have waivers. And at the same time, encouraging the building up of Nigerian entrepreneurs in the business of coastal shipping. So one of the pillars of cabotage in Nigeria is that vessels which ply Nigeria's coastal waters must be owned by Nigerians or Nigerian companies where Nigerians own 60% of the shares. Now, in following up this principle, uh, uh, the country created what is called a cabotage vessel financing fund. That means it's created a fund whereby Nigerian entrepreneurs can access the funds to buy cabotage vessels. Now, before cabotage, Nigerians did not participate at all in coastal shipping. Uh, uh, the coastal shipping was totally dominated by, by, by foreign vessels and foreign interest. Now, you've seen some benefits from this already at yes. labor issues? Exactly, exactly. It means that with cabotage, uh, Nigerian companies are springing up. Nigerian entrepreneurs uh, are developing their companies in that business. And even uh, the manpower, shipping manpower, like seafarers, it's developing as a career. All of this did not exist before cabotage. That's so for sense. us, it's a win-win situation. Okay. Nigeria is developing, and the foreign companies can still do the cabotage if they get waivers. Right, I understand. So what, what, what are your thoughts on cabotage? Is this a solution for all countries along the African coast? Can it be duplicated, or are there other sort of complications that um, affect? Yeah, look, I think cabotage is always going to be one of those very uh, divisive topics. And as I always say at the outset, one has to make it clear which sort of interest they're, they're looking at. Um, because if you look at, um, from the, if I call it the African interests for the moment, um, there's a lot of drive in terms of getting more beneficial involvement in, in ship ownership from an African perspective. Certainly, the SEDAC uh, protocol on meteorology and uh, transport, um, you know, makes that that sort of call, as well as the African Union Maritime Charter. So, as a stance, that's where, from a policy perspective, um, the African continent is starting to say, look, we we've got a vast coastline, we've got vast resources that get shipped uh, largely out, but also a lot of exploration around the coast, and uh, we want participation in that space. Having said that, then the, the devil comes down to the detail in terms of how it's actually implemented. And if it's just an out-and-out -out cabotage, in, in most instances, you are going to get uh, increased costs, ironically. Um, so the maritime economics always dictate that the, the, the competition is a lot more welcome, but there are ways to balance it. Uh, and cabotage isn't something that can be seen as a, a policy on its own. Um, it has to feed into a system. So if if you're talking cabotage, then there, there must be talks around the flagging, but also that affects the tax. What sort of taxes are we paying? Is it a tonnage tax? Is it uh, income tax? And in the end, of, at the end of the day, that's what affects owners' decisions in terms of uh, the, the the sort of attract the the, the, the the want to get into that space uh, and operate your vessel in, in that sort of space, and also. There are different types of cabotage. You get a cabotage, which I think is more the Nigerian model that deals with uh, where the vessel operates. Uh, and then there's, of course, a type of cabotage that deals with what cargo is carried. Um, and I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Guinea is one such example where they say up to 50% of the mineral exports should be carried by Ghanaian flagged uh, vessels. vessels. Um, now, if you're introducing that aspect, 
then you must have your administrative capability to support the flag state requirements. So, yes, definitely Africa's participation in shipping is very clear and going forward certainly a lot more African countries are, are going to uh, take that route of going the cabotage route. The question is how it's, it's balanced in the end and to make sure that your, your maritime lawyers who are working on it, your maritime economists, understand these dynamics and, and carve it in the correct way. In South Africa, we've been very delicate in terms of how we step on that. There are, uh, you know, calls for that for that direction, and certainly it's something that's been debated thoroughly, uh, even in terms of the maritime policy. And uh, the maritime uh, charter as well had made a call uh, for a certain percentage of cargo to be carried by by uh, South African uh, vessels. But that's a process we're moving slowly in, um, not necessarily decisive at this moment. Uh, but at least our own fleet is slowly starting to grow, uh, where now we have owners who are, who are registering on the South African, on the South African uh, flag. And some people are saying if you had the cabotage in place, um, given the market that we're in, it would attract more owners to look, to look at registering there, because at least it secures tonnage for, for, or rather cargo for their tonnage. Okay, all right. <clears throat> That's excellent insight on that topic, and I'm sure that... Um, We'll see many variations, many solutions um, coming out of this region. So thank you so much. Thank you.